you know, because we just had a little like pre-chat before, that you were also an English National Opera Harwood artist. I was, I was, a few years ago now. Yeah, of course, a few years ago, but I'm currently one, and um, I think I finish in July. I would be in my second year in July. And oh, are you sad to leave? I am, actually. I'm sad to leave in one respect because, you know, it has been a family for me, ah. like a really amazing family, you know. And in the second chunk, I'm not sad because I know that they've given me a foundation that I can go and fly on like Superman or Superwoman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and you know, we were just talking about our wonderful hidden gem of a coach, Jane Robinson. Uh, Jane, the, oh gosh, the, the things she said to me in the in the uh, in the practice room <laughs> made me feel I'm crying. But man, she is, honestly, I mean in my opinion, yeah. may be the best coach in the UK. And, yeah. and she's she's so wonderful because she you don't hear necessarily so much about her because all she cares about is the work. Yes, she exactly. What she does in the room with you to make you yeah. better. And then she goes home and thinks of, of, of other things, you know? Yes, yes. And, and I think that's, it's really great when you can get a coach that is that present. I mean, like you, I've been sent home crying with Jane because she's just so particular <laughs> about what she wants. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure that I get it done. And then you go. It's then, motivational. It's, it, it's, yes. She's not mean. But no, she's never uh, mean. Ne always loving. Always loving. Um, but she knows what you can do and she wants you to get you to your full potential. And I love that about her. Anyway, it's 9.01, oh my goodness, 9.09, 9.09, 9.09, 9.09, 9 So hi, everybody. I'm Nadine Benjamin. I am a professional opera singer. I am a certified high-performance coach, and I'm a certified NLP mind coach and a theta healer. And I'm on 12-week stay at home, can't leave my house. So I love connecting champion and, and celebrating people. And so while I'm here, I thought I would share my coaching skills and my thoughts and all the other gems of the people that I know in my life. And today we're going to celebrate and be with Duncan Rock. So Duncan Rock, you know, has had an international career in opera for the past 10 years. He has performed roles at the Metropolitan Opera in New York, the Royal Opera House, us, both of us, as we said, English National Opera and Glyndebourne. Raised in Australia, Duncan studied law before turning to opera in his mid-20s. He has a lifelong relationship with fitness and health and runs a nutrition consultant consultation business. While while also completing a master's in nutritional science and it is such a pleasure Duncan to have you here thank you thank you so much for being here and as, I, <laughs> and as I always say neither of us are medical doctors or psychiatrists so if you do need that help please 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 go and seek it I fully encourage it this is a place just to get some further personal development or tips or ideas and just support us while we're in this space at the moment. So, hey, morning, Susan. So, hey, Duncan, tell us about yourself. It's so lovely to have you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, nice to be here. Although, you know, we're neighbours, but obviously, you know, we yes. can well be on the other side, opposite sides of the world. Yes. Neighbours in Hove. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you know, I now live in, in Hove in the UK. Um, I, uh, I'm married. I have a, a dog as well, Terry. Aww. I'm expecting my first child in July. Which is wow, congratulations. Really congratulations. Um, really a wonderful sort of shining light in, in a, what is obviously a difficult time. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm, I grew up in Western Australia, in Perth. Uh, where I did all my schooling. I wasn't born there. I was born in the UK, but um, yeah. I, uh, my father's English. My mum is from Brazil. Mm. Oh, wow. I had no <laughs> idea. Yeah. That often shocks people, um, considering my, you know, all this ginger business. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually get the ginger from my from my maternal grandmother, from my Brazilian side. Wow. It's strange, but there we are. Um yeah, I grew up in Australia. We moved there when I was very young. I did all my schooling, did my first degree there in law. Mm. And just as I was finishing my law degree, um, this, I di discovered this thing um, 
opera. It's a strange thing, which as you'd expect in, in Perth, Western Australia, is not, not really that present. Um, and um, I, I, when I was at law school, I was sort of stealing units from the music department. Um, and, you know, I'd go and have singing lessons and go and, you know, concert practice and all this stuff. And the more I did law, the more I realized it probably wasn't for me. And the more I did music, the more I thought, oh my gosh, this thing is, it's just so incredible. Yeah. And yeah. I got this gift of an opportunity. Um, uh, in 2006, I won a competition in Australia, the Australian Singing Competition Marty Award, which it's just an extraordinarily generous prize, which changed my life. It gave me a full scholarship to come to the UK, study all my apartments, flights, you know, it was really a free ride. Wow. So generous, yeah. And arrived in London a little, you know, a little bit clueless, but, but very enthusiastic. And here we are, 13 years later. Um, and I, yeah, haven't looked back. I, it's, been, it's been quite a, a wild ride, but I've, I've enjoyed it. You've had such a prominent career in your singing. I mean, what in terms of you know becoming a professional singer, what has been your 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 greatest learnings? You know, um, I I have to look back to both the ENO and yeah. Winborn for just yeah. being beyond beyond generous with me. Um, you know, Glyneborn, maybe even Glyneborn in particular giving me roles like well beyond my station sort of giving me a chance yeah, um, yeah. like you know i sang tarquinius in the rape of lucretia you know surrounded by people that i really <laughs> had no place to be yeah. singing around but it, you know went really well and um i think I, I owe a lot to the um uh trust of those two companies in particular yeah i really identify with you i mean for me being a harvard artist and doing english national opera has you know, I didn't come through conservatoire. And so that's this the first time I've been inside a structure that is like a family that has really heard me and has encouraged me to be the best singer and not just the best singer, but the best artist and colleague I could possibly be as well. Oh. You know, and you give uh, a better compliment to a program. I mean Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um you know, and I have found, you know, you know, I, I don't know if Michelle Williams was there with when you, but she's been a great mentor to me, mm. you know, in terms of just getting me to think about where I want to be and how I want to go forward. I was at Guildhall with Michelle. Oh, was you? Was oh, my God, amazing. amazing. Yes. Uh, she was, the, this is, you know, this is absolutely a compliment. She was the, the head of the student union and um, yeah. organized by awesome parties and events and stuff. It's incredible yeah. to see what she's achieved, you know. Yeah, so her leadership skills were showing even for them. Yeah. yeah, so that's that that's wonderful. And so you 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 you've had this wonderful singing career and how have you so then how did you get into nutrition? What made you feel that nutrition was important as well as your singing? Well, I, like you mentioned at the start, I have had a long, lifelong relationship with, with health and fitness. Um, actually stemming, uh, as, as is not uncommon, from, from having problems with my weight when I was a child. Um, mm. The age of sort of seven to about 12, uh, you know, I struggled with my weight. A few things happened in life that, you know, uh, weren't great. And um, yeah, and when I was about 11 or 12, I remember very distinctly, my mum taking me to see a nutritionist, a dietitian in a hospital. Um, and they gave me advice, like this is how, if you want to achieve this, this is how what you can do. These are the things you can do to get there. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling very empowered uh, mm -hmm. by this advice. Um, it stopped, things stopped being a guessing game, or it, I remember it sort of took away the sort of emotional response mm -hmm. to how I was feeling. And I just thought, okay, I want to be here now. I know the steps to get there, mm. and it worked. And I've it's ever since been, you know, quite fit and healthy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, my first job while I was at law school, my first job was as a, a personal trainer. Um, I got oh, my wow. yeah. I used to run people around on the on Cottesloe Beach. Which, if anyone wants to Google Cottesloe Beach, um, it you can see why I was very happy working there. It is it, <laughs> it's the most beautiful beach in the world, really. Oh. And uh, then, of course, you know, when I came to the UK, I did actually work uh, while I was a student at, at Virgin Active. 
for for a short period of time. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you know, for for money, basically, you know, as a, as a part. Yeah. But um, you know, as soon as I started singing, I got luckily very busy very quickly, and and obviously yeah. travel. Um, so I I switched things to to more um, you know, online and and one on one. Um, yeah sort of work and and here we are and sorry to waffle on but um no, no you're not waffling on it's great um and a couple of years ago um you know i started to really work have like you know what you could describe as an international career like lots mm. and lots of travels travel you know six seven eight months of the year mm. and as much as i love the work and you know i love rehearsing and i love performing and i love the adventures mm. i realized that for my optimum happiness in my life you know as a man who wanted then and now is starting a family mm. um i needed to reduce the amount of travel i was doing okay um so i i, was, I remember to say i was in brisbane in uh, in australia mm. uh, and just looking into things that i could do to to allow that because you know unfortunately in the uk um, you know, there's no options to like have a fest contract or something like that. No, yeah, unfortunately, that, yeah. Honestly, that would be very appealing to me if that were an option. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. You know, because I've done 10 years of, of travel now and as, as, much, as wonderful as it is, I, you know, I sort of feel like I've had that adventure. Hmm. And um, I, I was looking into things like physiotherapy, studying physiotherapy remotely. But of course, a lot of them are impossible. Uh, you know, if you need to work with cadavers and, and subjects, it's mm. impossible to do. And I had a, a, an epiphany one day. I, I, I realized I was listening to my something like 10th or 11th podcast on nutritional science that week. <laughs> I study this formally. I'm obviously obsessed with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked into options and I found this fantastic course at Deakin University in Melbourne. Oh, wow. Which allows me to study completely remotely. But the content is exactly the same as the on campus students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I've been doing that since 2018. I had to sit a couple of exams and, you know, show that I could um, study and all that. And they accepted me. And so I've been doing it part time while traveling. And I, I'm yeah. going to finish it actually. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, because obviously I'm also a, a professional singer and I sing internationally as well. Um, but I've also got my coaching. There is a lot of singers that we, we do have these kind of portfolio careers or we have passions that we feel that we have to have alongside our singing. I mean, for me, coaching saved my life. It was something that um, helped me to grow and helped me to have changed my thoughts and my mind. And I, I, I love working with the mind. You love working with the body, but I love working with the mind. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, what do you feel about, you know, like singers having, you know, portfolio careers and, you know, where they're doing two different things? I mean, I, I think no one should feel pressured to do or not do anything. Um, yeah. I think, uh, uh, you know, the concern was, and I remember I, I had one mentor at the Met who's been really, really kind to me over the years offering me advice, who, who said, look, there may be a, a perception of you that you're stopping being a singer. Um, even doesn't matter how busy you are, if you're also doing something else, you might look like a part-time singer. Yeah. Which, you know, if that is the perception, that's, that's, I can't really control that. I mean, I, my my singing schedule obviously is a little bit strange at the moment, but it certainly doesn't look like the schedule of a part time singer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's the thing, isn't it? That people can 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 really get their wires crossed. You know, I mean, in terms of when we're learning roles and really concentrating on having focused time with roles, sometimes it is always good to have something else to go to in order to let those things even come into the body and the system more in a, in a more relaxed way um and i find that they inform what i do and how i sing i mean i don't know if you found the same thing yeah i mean it, it, i certainly i i don't have a sort of energy level for the day and if i do nutrition stuff then i no longer have energy for singing they're, they're sort of you know you have a different stomach for dessert yes <laughs> I have a different stomach for nutrition and and for for singing you know they they, they, yeah. they, I think it almost to have a bit of a dichotomy, can, you can do something productive, productive, but you're relaxing yeah. your singing muscle while, you know, doing your other yeah. thing. But, I, you know, I, once again, I, I realise it's becoming a bit more common for people to do. Absolutely. I don't think any singer should feel pressured. If you don't no. to do 
whatever, something on the side, have an interior design business on the side. That's okay, you know, I, 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 it's perfectly fantastic and awesome to just yeah. be an opera singer. If, exactly. You know, that's wonderful, yeah. Exactly. So if you could, I just wanted to ask, you know, because we've been talking about singing and then we've been talking about um, nutrition, what do you think is the relationship between singing and nutrition? Yeah, I mean, nutrition, I, I, I write a lot about nutrition. Um, on my website, I have a blog and a sort of nutritional advice section. And, and I, I wrote recently, you know, health is often considered to be like one element of life. Like my health is good, my job is going well, you know, and, and you know, my garden's looking fabulous. <laughs> I, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as, as something that underpins everything. and. Mm. Uh, you know, as we can see at the moment, when the health, when your health falls, you, you sort of lose everything in a way. Um, and, you know, singers have, you know, I, I mean, I think the answer of how nutrition and health affects singing is, is fairly self-explanatory. I mean, our body is our instrument. Um, and, it, it, you know, if you want it to function optimally, you should, you should treat it um, as such. And, opera singers, particularly traveling opera singers, I think we underestimate how stressful the job can be. Uh, you know, tons of travel, a very, very high pressure, high risk and very low security job. Yes. Um, constantly, you know, thinking about the next thing, you know, we, as opera singers, we, we're often living in very different, multiple time periods. We're thinking about what am I doing right now? Do I have rehearsals, do I have performance? What's my next opera? Am I preparing for that? Yeah. And then this ridiculous thing, if you're lucky enough to experience, what offers am I getting three, four, five <laughs> years into the future? <laughs> you know, I just got this offer to sing something I've never sung. Am I going to be able to sing it? Do I have time to look at it? You know, yeah. this is this all adds to, to stress on the body and on the mind. Yes. And yeah. um, what and when we eat affects mm. everything in, the, in our health and, you know, how we sleep, our energy levels specifically to singing things like reflux you know yes uh, it's a common problem with singers you know. um and, and yet if you sort of ask there doesn't seem to be consensus whereas there is information available in the scientific literature that could give us good answers about how to yeah. do it i'm actually writing an article about reflux and singing at the moment which i, I should oh, brilliant yeah I'll, I'll let you know when i when i've um, absolutely i'll post it out absolutely yeah. great um but what happens in opera, I've noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed the same, is when we, as soon as we talk about health or nutrition or, eat, or more specifically exercise, we tend to get really focused on this really narrow element of the external manifestation of yeah, exactly. so the sopranos needing to be thin or the baron yeah. needing to be like, oh, incredible. I mean, in fairness, Duncan. On stage, I have seen you at the Royal Opera House in Billy Bud. And oh, I've seen you in, yeah, and I saw you in Breaking the Waves, yeah, in Edinburgh. And I have to say that you do look like Incredible Hulk on stage. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> I'm not the, nicest lie. Thing. It's the nicest thing anyone anyone has ever said to me. Thank you. Thank you. I can. Thank you. No, I mean, obviously, I love working out, and I, I've never hidden that and 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 yet I can't hide it you know I, it, it appears yeah. on my body but I I certainly don't advocate for getting hung up on that no exactly and I certainly yeah. don't think everyone else needs to do what I do like for me it's like I have a I think of my health yeah. mainly coming through nutrition and, and all the behaviors you know sleep not drinking not too much you know not smoking is the sort of what I think we should all do yes and the exercise, you know, I think everyone should exercise a bit, but yeah. no, I don't think everyone needs to do the sort of amount of exercise that I like to do, but that happens to be what works for me. Yes. You yeah. know, my hobby, I've had it forever and I, I wouldn't really know what to do if I, if I didn't have that in my life. But fitness in general is really important for a singer anyway, because I mean, the, the operas are long. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like a, a marathon with, um, you know, a few bouts of boxing in there, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a long duration thing. I mean, with also bursts of, of intensity. I actually, I recommend to singers that they, um, 
engage in some sort of um, high intensity interval training. Oh, wow. Okay. What that does, it's, it's where you have like a short burst of exercise, say yeah. sprint for 50 meters and then yeah. uh, rest for say a minute and then yeah. do it again, maybe 10 times. It gets your body very adept at bringing your heart rate and your, you know, your, your uh, respiratory rate down quickly after some stress. Oh, wow. That's a great tip. Yeah. So, I mean, I find like particularly one role for me that I've sung a lot is Don Giovanni. Yes. Yes. And a perfect example is, you know, you sing the trio with um, uh, Leporello and, and Donna Anna. And yeah. Then you fight the Commendatore. Yeah. Uh, it's quite physical. You know, I've done ones where I've, you know, beaten his head in with a brick or, you know, all that kind of running around. And then you have to sing this pianissimo, quiet, beautiful trio with the Commendatore and Leporello. Yeah, a couple of times, yeah, oh, 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 so cool. Um, and actually, doing hit training really helped me to manage that to bring oh, wow. my breathing right down, my heart rate right down. Yeah, so it, it definitely directly transfers. Oh, thank you. That's 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 wonderful. I think that's a great tip. I mean, in terms of like what you were talking about, the perception of what a singer should look like. I mean. How, have, how has that affected you? I mean, because you are, you know, someone who looks really fit. Do you think that your, that your roles are chosen because of how you look as well as how you sing? It's, I mean, I'd certainly say if I had to pick a side, you know, it's been more of a benefit. Uh, if we're talking, talking just of the superficial external, not about fitness, yeah. just how you look, it has yeah. helped. I mean, a, a lot of the, barit the roles for a younger baritone, roles like Billy Bard, Don Giovanni, Taquinius, uh, it it can help. It can help. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're few and far between, actually. It, it's it's certainly not the bulk of the repertoire, and yeah. you know, you have to be able to sing. Um, yeah. You know. I'm now. You know, I, I I received a bit of you know early on before you know before things really started to go well and I got yeah. jobs at the Met and stuff. You know, yeah. People do, you know, people can get envious and. Yeah. Um, and will try to bring you down or put you down and try to belittle what you're trying to do. Um, yeah. And I got, you know, oh, he's only getting roles because he takes his shirt off and, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And I and I always say, do you think I go to an audition and like take my shirt off, do a bunch of push ups, and they, <laughs> and they, they give you no, no, I go in just like you, <laughs> sing my arias, it, and you know, that's that's the base. And then also, you know, it can help if you um, if you fulfill a director's vision of what a role should look like. Um, yeah. You know, like, particularly baritones, I don't think people really do this, but you certainly shouldn't care more about your abs than your voice. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, like I don't think people are doing that, but yeah. it's, we, well, I, we're here to sing, you know. Yeah, but I love that you, what you were saying about the, um, that nutrition is an inside job. It really is an inside job. And just like the mind and working on the mind is an inside job, creating our characters are inside jobs. You know, alongside your nutrition, do you do uh, acts of mindfulness or anything like that? I um, I have had a lifelong, not lifelong, that's a lie, uh, several years long, mm -hmm. up and down relationship with meditation. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I, I really, I, I, it's something I struggle with. I, I'm so glad you're honest about that. Yeah, well. I mean, I, I have, I've tried all the apps, Sam Harris waking up and calm and 10% happier, all of them, you know. And I, I find myself, you know, I get into a zone and I can do it every day and then I get out of the practice. And th there is definitely a, um, the, the biggest thing I noticed from doing it is I am someone who can get quite sort of, um, embroiled or rolled up in a particular negative emotion whether that be yeah. embarrassment or anger or, yeah. and what it ha did, has and does allow me to do is sort of reduce the half-life oh. of that emotion um, somewhat so what if someone cuts me off on the road instead yeah. of thinking oh, i'm going to chase this guy and you know <laughs> knock him down obviously i can do that but i can just I, you still feel the emotion that ridiculous yeah. sort of swelling up of aggression yeah. But then you, you, you're able to notice it and let it go. Which but that's brilliant. So, but that in itself, uh, Duncan, is mindfulness. That self-awareness 
that then turns into self-control is a wonderful thing. Okay. That in itself is what you're practicing. Because I was thinking, even when you we go on, you know, people, lots of people do walks and lots of people do runs as well. I sometimes feel that that's also a, a, a part of meditation because you're so focused when you're doing it. Your mind is so, I don't know. I don't know if that's the same experience for you. Do you know what? I People seem to be able to impart that um, benefit onto things like yoga or Pilates, yeah, yes, but yes. dismiss it as something like running or lifting weights. I, I think this is a mistake. I think uh, any time spent focusing on the physical, yeah. being in the here and now, whether that's you're running and you're concentrating your breathing or you're doing a downward dog and you're thinking about relaxing your hamstrings, or if you're doing a squat and you're focusing on you know, getting full range of motion, is, is time spent taken sort of out of your head and out of the million thoughts you can have. Um, yeah. I, I, I always say to people, don't underestimate the non-physical benefits of exercise. It, it, yes. I mean, they're proven. And, and I don't know anyone who actually does it who doesn't notice it. Yeah. I, I call that thing when you're talking about that thing of being in your mind, washing machine head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you have any tips for us, you know, in terms of kind of nutrition and singing? Do you have any tips that you'd like to share with everybody? Yeah. And I, I um, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing a master's in nutritional science is because I, you know, I, I, I believe in, trying to go for the, the best distillation of the science. Um, I, I have a little bit of an aversion to, you know, top 10 best foods for weight loss and stuff like that. But I have a couple of principles that I, I recognize that I normally um, try to give clients that can really help, you know, because when I, when I see someone, every piece of advice I give them is, is based on their unique physiology and goals. Um, mm. That's what I like about it because, we're all very different physiologically. Yeah, they're all unique. Yeah. Every, yeah. But, you know, one thing I always say, I've sort of alluded to it, is to always prioritize what I would describe as real health, true health coming from the inside, mm. rather than external manifestations of that. So concentrate on eating more vegetables mm. rather than seeing the scale drop. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. I love that. And so one will flow from the other. The, yeah. And I, I always find people get better, healthier, long-term results if they focus on the, the former rather than on the latter. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I often say is don't think about food as being good or bad. People often ask me something like, I wrote a blog post, is peanut butter healthy? Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends. Um, uh, I always say don't think about this as being good. Think about what's your goal? Yeah. Is it going to get you there? Yeah, um, yeah. Or is it going to take you... In the in the other direction, which yeah. again I find people get quite good results thinking of things that way. Yeah. And the other really important thing is, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Oh yes. So yeah. if you had a instead of having a wholemeal sandwich for breakfast, you had it with white bread. You know, God, <laughs> God forbid. Don't then go. Oh well, I guess everything's ruined, and I should you know give up. And you know it. it Small changes, consistent small changes, are the way to make real progress. Um, it, it, you don't have to switch from eating, you know, junk food to drinking kale smoothies four times a day. You know, it, it, it's just, just be a little bit better than you were last week. A little bit, do something a little bit better than you did last week. Um, and that, yeah, those are sort of general principles that I tend to. Yeah, I mean that's brilliant. I mean I love what you just spoke about there about consistency, because I mean especially with the mind as well, where consistently, if we want to change our habits, and I suppose with the same with nutrition, if we want to change our habits, they have to be as you've just said, small consistent changes, because it's in the repetition and it's in the consistency that the actual changes occur. And I think some people can really forget that that they think they have to give up, you know, because it's not working after three days. Yeah. But, you know, to have an actual change takes 21 days and to have a full habitual change takes 90 days, as in you don't have to think about it anymore. Huh. Yeah. You know, it's, um, we were talking earlier about, are we seeing at the moment? Yes. Yeah. And you know, I recommend, I said, I'm trying to do 10 minutes a day. Yes. But I think that's a good principle 
anyway. I mean, you can't not sing all week and then sing four hours on a Saturday and no. make progress. You're better off doing 20 minutes every day, yeah. now every day. Exactly. Same with nutrition. Yeah, and exactly what I'm doing. I'm singing 20 minutes a day. That's it for now until I find something I'm, I am actually going to be working on an opera. But, at, you know, but at the moment, because I've just gone back to singing because I haven't really sung in a month, I was saying to you, you know, and I was just like, actually, now I can start singing for 20 minutes a day. I'm going to start singing for 20 minutes a day and let's see what happens, you know. And um, it's that consistency that rebuilds the muscle. And that's all we want to do is just keep rebuilding the muscle. The muscles of courage, courage muscles. <laughs> Oh, it's been so lovely to, to to speak to you, Duncan. I've just got some people here. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Anthea. Hey, Susan. Anthea saying, yes, walking can be meditative and so can gardening and singing can be meditative as well. Um, and Susan is saying also hobbies like sewing and crochet and knitting help her. You know, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, good to hear. We all have our own way of finding our mindfulness. We all have our own way of finding our nutrition. We all have our own way of finding our consistency. And um, Duncan, I just feel so, um, so happy and so warmed that you, you've you um, spent this time with us this morning. You know, I'm so, you know, in all of your wonderful career and I know that that's based on hard work and your absolute focus in what you do and your absolute dedication when I see you on stage I can see that you're absolutely there and you're alive and you know and your voice is amazing as well so we you, you just seem to have that whole package there's no there's no doubt why you wouldn't be at the Met or somewhere you know oh, so, so I, I really really wish you so much continued success i really really do um, thank you so much now is there any lasting thought that you want to leave with us or or, or are we saying goodbye <laughs> I, I think we've sort of covered um i was yeah. just thinking uh, i i would love i hope we get to sing together one day although i'm not sure i i can sing your repertoire <laughs> Well, we'll see. I mean, I think the universe has a funny way of putting people together that, you know, if we're meant to sing together, we will sing together. I do believe in that. I really, really, really do believe in that. And Rebecca is saying thank you so much, Duncan. And I have to say, everybody, that actually I didn't choose Duncan. Three people came to me and and sent me texts and emails saying, can you please, please, please interview Duncan Rock? Oh, thank you for those people. <laughs> oh, I'm really so th they are here. <laughs> <laughs> they are he's here because of them and and I am I'm so glad that I did know him and could put my what my texting buttons on and, and and actually and actually get in contact and what I love about Duncan is he just immediately showed up and said yes of course I'm going to show up and I'm going to serve and that's what we're doing here every day we're just showing up and serving whoever it's meant to hear that's who it's meant to to, to connect with we just want to connect we want to champion and we want to celebrate and Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to, uh, no, not tomorrow. We Have a nice weekend. Oh, and remember over your weekend, please make sure that you schedule your time. Even if you're going to watch Netflix all weekend, please make sure you schedule your time. Make it a conscious decision that you are going to empower yourself to take time off, to rest, to play, to have fun. Or if you think that you've got some new idea that you want to work in, schedule that in because that is your time. It belongs to you. On Monday, we will have another baritone. And we will have Peter Brathwaite on Monday, who's yeah. going to be talking to all of us at, about creativity. And Tuesday, we will have James Clutton from Opera Holland Park talking about their many ventures that are going on at the moment. So once again, Duncan, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you. I'm celebrating you. Bye, Lena. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. And take care and uh, God bless. Bye-bye. Take care.